Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm looking at the DraftKings FanDuel and Price Picks plays for Monday, August 15th already. Football will be here in less than four weeks, so super exciting in terms of regular season. Preseason been going on last week and a half or so. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. If you enjoyed the videos, appreciate it with the like button for me. Subscribe if you haven't already. See if we can try to get 50 likes on the video. would be much appreciated. We have 10 games slate today for baseball, but... There's only a couple teams that look really good to, in terms of stacking. Uh, lots of medium to high-end pitching uh, talent on this slate, so there's not a ton of great teams to stack. First game up is the Cubs against the Nats. Definitely could go to some of these Cubs here just with how cheap they are. You know, they they got Reyes after he was uh, designated for assignment, uh, so he could be a nice value option at 29. The leadoff hitter Ortega looks okay at 28, but other than that, don't have much interest in this game in general. On the Nat side, the only guys that would be somewhat interesting would be the really cheap guys like Robles and Yadiel Hernandez, uh, Cruz, and Voigt. They've not been great this year, and Voigt's been really poor since he's been acquired by the, the Nationals, and you can't really blame him going from the Padres to the dumpster in Washington. Next game up is the Yankees and the Rays. Uh, Garrett Cole's going at it, for, so don't have any interest in the uh, the Rays side unless you're making this one lineup in a in like a huge GPP. Uh, on the Yankee side, against a lefty, guys like you know Donaldson, Judge, Torres look okay, but uh, besides Judge, I don't have much interest in them. Got the Blue Jays look like one of the two teams that I'm looking to stack today against uh, Baltimore and Kyle Bradish. Looking at their lineup, like Gordiel batting leadoff 42. You can get to like Bobache, good shortstop option at 48. And then maybe look to one of the guys that are 7 through 9. Don't have any interest in the Baltimore bats. You could look to Kikuchi as a very cheap pitching option today. Next game up, we have two good pitchers, uh, Carlos Carrasco and Spencer Strider. Strider gives you a lot of strikeout upside. Carrasco's pitch fine him, himself as well for the Mets this year, being a serviceable number 3 for them. Uh, and... Uh, Strider uh, going up against the Mets has a 3.7 total on the other side. The Mets bats are really expensive. The top four all over 5K pass on them. And then even the Braves, I don't have much interest with how expensive they are. Uh, besides like Eddie Rosario, the second baseman, uh, Grissom and Ozuna look like okay values. The Twins are probably my favorite team to stack today just with them facing off against uh, a lefty in Bubik and a poor lefty in that. The Twins side... Love uh, getting to Jorge Polanco, 4K. I like getting to Miranda as well at 35. And then you've got uh, Urshela as well at only $3,200. I don't know why they do not have Buxton in this lineup. I don't think anything happened to him, but we'll check on that. Uh, but he will be one of the better pay-up options today. And then the Rangers look fine as well. They're at home against uh, James Caprolin. Only a couple guys that look solid would be Nate Lau at only $2,900. And Simeon is incredibly cheap on FanDuel. And then you got like Josh Smith and Brad Miller and Duran all the way down there below 2500 bucks. Next game up, you could look to some of these Astros, but I'm not that thrilled with them today. And then on the White Sox side, once again, against your Quiddy, don't have much interest. You could go to like Ila Jimenez or Mankata uh, at his price tags. But for only 4.2 total. Their bats haven't been that good all season. We know Astros do have a great bullpen as well in case your Quiddy doesn't get off to a great start or does struggle a little bit. It'll be tough to really count on them going off against that bullpen. The Dodgers against Freddy Peralta. Now, Peralta's been good over the years. He's been banged up for most of this season. Uh, so that's why Dodgers still getting some respect with 4.6 total. But I'm not that thrilled. In the last two games, I have no interest in targeting any bats. Looks like you can get all your pitchers from this game. Luis Castillo looks great. Otani, on the other hand, looks awesome as well. And then the last game, do you like Alex Cobb as a cheap SP2 option, only 7K. Going back to DraftKings, pitcher I'm going with is going to be Luis Castillo at $9,200, like the price tag against uh, the very strikeout heavy Angels team, heaviest strikeout team in baseball. Last couple of starts, he's gone really deep into the games. 110, 109 pitches for him against the Yankees and pitched well in both of them. And now he gets a great matchup against the Angels, banged up all season. And Castillo, the, no surprise that they gave up a fortune to get him from the Reds. And he so far has been making it pay off, and he should continue to do that again today. 
And then the second pitcher I'm going with is going to be Alex Cobb, just because he's so cheap against the Diamondbacks. It's um, at home, so it's a great ballpark to pitch in at home. He has a 3 ERA compared to a 5.95 ERA on the road, a 17 and a, 17 and a quarter fantasy points he's averaging at home. And he's been pretty consistent last few starts. Good game against the, the Padres going 5 with 7Ks, 15 fantasy points, put up 20 and 30 against the Dodgers and the Cubs, respectively. And at home is where he's had most of his better starts, so 7K. Can't ask too much from him at that price tag, but he still gives you upside of north of 20, and the ceiling is still at 30 for him. First batter I'm going to put in here is going to be Nate Lau, just because he's so cheap. He's only $2,900 as a first base option going up against Kaplan, so he gets the righty-lefty matchup as well. He's been hitting the ball well his last 10 games, about up to 343 uh, on the season. He still gives you power. He had a stolen base last game but only has two on the season now so he doubled that uh, but four hits in his last two games against Seattle now going up against Oakland at least they're at home so much better ballpark for him than going to the Coliseum and he has hit uh, Oakland well this year in 13 games batting 333 with a 608 slugging three home runs have come against the A's so at 2900 bucks really like him as a solid first base option that's really cheap Another one that's pretty cheap is third baseman uh, Gio Yershela, $3,200. He is hit a couple games ago. You almost had the uh, the cycle, missed it by a triple. Uh, anytime he goes up against the lefties where you have more interest in him, it wouldn't be surprised if he's batting like in the middle of the lineup against the lefty today in uh, Bubik. In the outfield, I wanted to check on Buxton, see why he wasn't on Fantasy Labs. He's not on the injury list or anything like that. Um... Yeah, I'm not sure, but I'll go ahead and put him in for right now. If I'm stacking the Twins, definitely we'll be st stacking them with uh, Byron Buxton with uh, the speed combination, back-to-back -back games with stolen bases, with the power that he possesses. Uh, the average has come way down since the start of the season, but still like you know, still like him for what he is uh, and with there not being a ton of great uh, top-end hitters to f stack and to put in your lineups today with just how good some of these pitchers are then some of these better teams are facing some good pitchers so uh, that's why I'm sticking with Buxton at 56 and then last guy is going to be Lourdes Gurriel Jr. to get to a Toronto Blue Jays he's been batting leadoff for them since Springer is on the IL and has done a pretty good job of it on the season he's not striking out much uh, he makes good contact he had a three hit game yesterday hopefully he can continue that uh, before that was three straight games with uh, zero but he's still at been what you want for a leadoff hitter 308 average a uh, solid on base percentage and walks okay amount 26 walks on the season but in terms of some of the other blue jays he's probably the more affordably priced uh, but that's about it for DraftKings. go ahead and look at FanDuel. so on FanDuel, still stuck with uh luis castillo as my pitcher uh you do have otani if you wanted to go down to him at 10k save 11 1200 uh, but i still wanted to get to castillo on both sides and then Cobb is pretty expensive at 93 compared to some of these other guys. So usually on Fandle, I'm looking to pay up for a pitcher. So we did that with Castillo on both sides. And then swam with Nate Lau still as my first baseman. He's a little bit more expensive at 29 compared to some of these other guys. But still wanted to get to him with the way that he's been hitting the ball. Simi is crazy cheap. Second base is pretty ugly today. So he makes a lot of sense to get to him at $2,400 with the speed that he still possesses and the power. At times, your shell and Buxton to get us two twins that do think we'll score some runs and be a, a pretty solid stack today against uh, Bubik and the Royals. So over on price picks, there are a bunch of nerfies that I'm going with today. In terms of the pitcher fantasy score, you do have some that look appealing with a couple low-scoring games uh, early. Well, at least the Padres game should be no low-scoring with Alcantara and Musgrove. Uh, but I will start it off with 41.5 fantasy for Luis Castillo. Now, if he's going to continue to throw 100 910 pitches a game, We'll get those extra strikeout opportunities. We'll get those extra, uh, just more opportunities to get the win and the projected and the quality start just with how deep he goes into games. And Angel strike out so much. His strikeouts are like at seven, I think. Uh, so that's fine, but I don't mind taking the fantasy on him instead. And then the rest, uh, I like some nerfies. We have a pretty f solid board. They don't have a couple ones that I would want, like the Padres one isn't on here, but still have a good amount. The A's and Rangers nerfy looks solid. You know, always Oakland's kind of don't have to worry too much about them really scoring a lot of runs any given game. 
and on the Texas side, Kaplan's at least been one of the better pitchers for the A's. So hopefully, even if he does get runs throughout the start, he's not able to do it in the first inning. So that's one. He got a pretty low scoring game. Uh, projected the Rangers do have four and a half total, but on the A side, only 3.6 total. So as long as the Rangers don't ruin it, which they could, I still think that would be one to target. Another one is the Braves and Mets. Nerfy with uh, Strider and Carrasco going at it. You got two solid pitchers, two good offenses, but still... Uh, it's one that I want to get to just because we've seen both pitchers you know, be really good at times this year. So even though the matchups are tough for both of those guys, still can hopefully we can count on just getting one one ending without a run to start off the game. And then the last one would be the Giants and Diamondbacks nerfy with uh, Cobb and Bumgarner going at it. It's basically just a ballpark thing with uh, San Francisco being great. And the pitchers are solid average guys. At least uh, Cobb is Bumgarner's tailing off at this point of his career, but there's still some value there. And another one could be the Yankees raise with uh, Garrett Cole going at it, so you just got to worry about the Yankees ruining it, which definitely could happen. And then another one would be the Cubs and Nats, if you wanted to add to that. Uh, but today could be a day with nerfies, so that's what I got on price picks. I got four today, Castillo over 41.5, and, and then three nerfies, A's. Rangers, Braves, Mets, and Giants, Diamondbacks. In terms of hitter fantasy, I'm just basically looking at the Twins guys and some of these um, Blue Jays guys and like maybe Judge. Uh, but other than that, I don't have much interest. Uh, it should be one where more pitchers look appealing today than hitters. And then other pitcher fantasy scores we could consider would be like Strider over 35.5. And, and then going down to like Alex Cobbett over 33.5. But that is about it for me. Thank you for watching. Best of luck tonight, and I will see you all next time.